catch that joke on the recording. Oh. <laughs> Crying out loud. Well, I'm not going to retell it. That was a good one. Okay, YouTube viewers, you'll never know if it was a joke or not. It's all right. Anyone watch? I watch them. I watch them. All right, here we go. Uh, so let's just review where we were at. So L'Hopital's rule just says, uh, if you're dealing with a limit problem that's too challenging, try taking the derivative of the top and bottom. It might make it into a problem that's not so challenging. Uh, you can use this on any problem that has zero over zero style upon substitution or infinity over infinity style. All right. We'll also see today that you can use it for other things, but first you have to do some uh, sort of prep work to get the problem ready. Okay, so let's just kind of review where we were at. You could do this on a problem as simple as this one. What is the limit as x goes to 5? Uh, let's do 25. And rad x minus 5 over x minus 25. So I taught my pre-calc students how to do this problem. They used a conjugate. They multiply top and bottom by root x plus 5. And you've learned it that way too. But L'Hopital's rule says that since this is giving us 0 over 0, we could instead do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. The derivative of the top is 1 over 2 rad x. The derivative of the bottom is 1. It's still a limit problem, so don't forget to keep the limo parked out front. Okay. And then you can plug in the 25 now. And at this point, you can see we're not getting undefined or indeterminate or anything weird. We're getting one-tenth. That's the answer. OK. So uh, also, we can use L'Hopital's rule to just prove stuff we used to know, but never really had a reason to believe. For example, this the limit as x goes to 0, sine x over x. Everybody in their great-grandmother's puppy knows that this is 1. <laughs> Okay. But why is it 1? Well, L'Hopital's rule uh, does give us a reason why we believe it's 1. So, since L'Hopital proved his thing, and it's all proven, uh, we could just take the derivative of the top and bottom. The derivative of the top is cosine. The derivative of the bottom is 1. And then you can solve this by direct substitution. 1. Okay, so this is, I wouldn't say it's a formal proof. But if you let L'Hopital's rule stand true, then you have at least some work you can show. We're also going to see later in um, chapter 9 that sine x can be written out and the x can cancel. So we're going to see that later, uh, but we're not ready for that quite yet. OK. Uh, let's try one here. Why don't you try this one? x goes to 0. We're going to do sine 4x over 3x. So I'm going to pause the recording and give you like a minute and a half, two minutes, or even just 30 seconds probably. You guys are so good at derivatives. Take your <laughs> derivatives and see what this comes out to. Don't forget it's still a limit. You're still plugging a zero in the end. OK, did you get 4 thirds? No. OK. You think it's a coincidence that the answer is 4 thirds and the question has a 4 and a 3 in it? Yep. All right. Well, it is not a coincidence. <laughs> um, if you take the derivative of the top, you get 4 times cosine 4x. That's the chain rule. So it's cos 4x. Then you throw in that 4 there. And the bottom, of course, the derivative is just 3. And now upon direct substitution, you get 4 times 1 over 3. <laughs> OK, so what about this? Limit as x goes to 0. Sine a x over b x. What do you think this is going to come out to? A over b is correct. Yes, because the derivative of the top, when you take the derivative of the top, you're going to get cos a x times the derivative of the inside a over the derivative of the bottom, which is just b. And upon plugging in 0, this part's going to go to 1. So you just end up with a over b. OK. What about this problem? The limit as x goes to infinity, 1 plus 1 over x to the x. So now we're just getting plain carried away. That's just nonsense. Look at that. 
Look at this garbage I gave you. See? <laughs> yucky, yucky. <laughs> take, take out your graphing calculator, though. I'll show you something. Yeah. Enter this function into your calculator. Put your calculator on table setup ask mode. But don't press graph like me. Press table. And this is after entering the function. Okay. Enter the function. 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Press table. And then just start typing really big numbers. 10, 100, oops, I typed 1. <laughs> 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Interesting. <laughs> Does that output look familiar? No. no? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Boy, I wish that looked familiar to you. That's like first order. Let's do 10 to the 6. That's a million. 2.7183. E. Yes, these are going to E. Interesting. So what I gave you looks like a bunch of garbage, but actually this is one of the definitions of E. If someone ever asks you what is E, you don't have to say the natural base. You can tell them, here, try this on your calculator. Take 1 plus a tenth to the tenth, or 1 plus 1 one hundredth to the one hundredth, or 1 plus 1 over a million to the millionth. This will help them see that E is a limit, really. These are all getting closer to E. None of them are E. But they're getting closer to E. E is an infinite limit defined as this. Okay? So maybe you wonder what is E. It's the natural base, and it's the limit of this little pattern here. It's not a hard pattern. Kind of take a one plus the uh, reciprocal to the power, and you'll get something close to E. Make sure your, uh, your input's nice and large. Now, in your calculator, for some reason, if you try like 10 to the 15th, uh, the calculator gets confused. I'm going to see if you can figure out what's confusing the calculator here, okay? So I'm going to put in 10 to the 15th power. It should give me something even closer to E, but the calculator spits back 1. What in the world? The calculator has the wrong answer here. Can someone tell me why the calculator is getting confused? Yes? Because as it's getting super big on the denominator inside the parentheses, it just goes to 1, and then it's just 1 to whatever. Power. Yeah, so the calculator is not as smart as you are, right? The calculator doesn't understand that you just gave it six problems to do, and it was all getting closer to a certain number. When the calculator evaluates a number, it does so independently of all of its previous calculations. So, Hunter is exactly right. It took 1 times 10 to the 15, which is, I think, quadrillions, right? Because billions is 9th power, trillions is 12th power, so quadrillions. You plug that in, and the calculator is basically rounding this to 1 first. See? This is so close to 1. It's 1 plus 1 quadrillionth, which is so close to 1. Then the calculator tries to do 1 to the power of whatever, and it's like, well, it's going to be 1. Calculator's wrong about that. The answer is E, but you can see that the technology is limited. The processor can't handle numbers that close to 1, nor numbers with 10 to the 15th power. Could you do it okay? on a computer? A computer probably would not get this one wrong. But, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe every computer would mess this up. So if you did in Wolfram Alpha, it would give you one? Wolfram Alpha is so smart, it would tell you it's going to E. It would write the letter E. Like, that thing is so super smart. It's been programmed to recognize this situation. So what would be interesting to do is to put, like, a 2 here and see what happens. Does anyone care to guess what's going to happen now? It goes to E squared. There's a 2 in there. Which explains why if you take this old formula, right? Remember this old finance formula? Change of range. 
You guys remember this old finance formula? If you put your money in the bank, right, for 10 years, and the interest rate is 5%, and it's compounded daily, right? This is going to tell you how much money you have in the end. You guys remember this formula? Yeah. Okay. What happens when you let in go really big? In other words, you compound all the time. Continuous compounding. Well, you can sort of see the E built into this. Look closely. Here's the 1 plus 1 over n to the n. See that? When you let n go big, this part goes to E, the green there. And that extra R that was on the inside makes it go to E to the R. So basically, you get this formula, P, E to the R, T. E to the R popped out of this portion, which is your continuous compounding formula, you see. So I don't memorize this formula anymore. It's easy enough to memorize, but I just know that limit. So I look at that and I say, well, that's just going to go to E to the R. So it's going to become P, E, R, T for your formula, if you see what I'm saying. So that form is not so mysterious if you realize 1 plus 1 over n to the nth limits to e. Okay, but how do we know it limits to e? Well, L'Hopital's rule can help us solve this problem. Like, who's the first person that ever discovered this e, right? Or how would you prove that this comes out to e? The calculator, that is not a convincing proof. That's just interesting. And I think we know the answer. So how would you do L'Hopital's rule in this problem? First of all, is it L'Hopital ready? No? It's not really. What makes a problem L'Hopital ready? Zero over zero. Zero over zero or? Infinity. infinity over infinity. This isn't even a fraction. Right? What's confusing about this problem is the fact that we have an x in the base and the power. So here's what you can do for a problem like this. First, Let y equal 1 plus 1 over x to the x. And since we don't really like having the x up in the power like that, can you think of a mathematical operation that would bring that x down? Ln. Good. So I'm going to put an ln on both sides here. Okay, if you're in AB last year, you learned L'Hopital's rule, but you didn't learn today's portion of it. So make sure you pay attention here. Okay, so putting the LN in there is a convenience thing. It makes the X fall out to the front. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take the limit. Limit as x goes to infinity. So one thing we learned this year is that whenever you want to use a calculus symbol, you almost always can. In other words, we treat these symbols as operators. Sometimes we put them in. Right? Feel free to put an LIM x goes to infinity on both sides. If ln y is truly the function x ln 1 over 1 plus 1 over x, then they have the same limit to infinity. So you can throw the LIM on both sides. And this right side is almost looking tall ready. It doesn't quite look like a fraction yet, but what if we wrote it like this? Here's the left side. What if we wrote this as LIM, x goes to infinity, and then we keep the LN garbage on top, and take this x that's in the front front here, and put it on the very bottom bottom down here. There's nothing wrong with that. By writing x as 1 over 1 over x, I now have this L'Hopital ready. So I want you guys to take a moment and do derivative top, derivative bottom. You'll see it cleans up a lot, and then you'll be able to find the limit. Okay? So go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. It's ready to go.
So it's a zero over zero style. You can use L'Hopital's rule. I just call it LHR. Okay, so what's the derivative of the top? I'll circle it in purple here. How do you find the derivative of ln of something? 1 over, yeah, 1 over this object <coughs> times the derivative of the object. Right, so it's going to be 1 over 1 plus x, 1 over x, so like this. Uh, 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of what's inside is really 1 plus x to the minus 1. So you could just do negative 1 over x squared right here. Okay, don't get excited and foil it. Look at the bottom. What's the derivative of the denominator? I'm circling it in pink. negative 1 over x squared. So I'm kind of glad we didn't simplify the top yet because you can see these just basically cancel out, don't they? Okay, this leaves me with a very simple problem to solve. Very simple. X is getting huge. What happens to the little 1 over x? Zero. Yeah, this term is vanishing, right? Right here? So this just goes to 1. So this is vanishing, so this all goes to 1. Now, is this the answer to the problem? I thought we said the problem was E. The answer is E. Yeah, remember what's on the left here. On the left side, we had put an LN in. Remember that? So right now, this is technically LIM. X goes to infinity of LN Y. One of the things that limits are very... Uh, one of the things I like about limits is they're so forgiving you can actually switch the LIM and the LN around. It's perfectly legitimate. So I'm going to put the LN on the outside and the LIM on the inside. And this is actually what I was looking for the whole time. So how do I get rid of the LN? E both sides. E both sides, right. So the answer to this problem is LIM x goes to infinity y equals e to the first, also known as e. Okay, so let's just break this down into a sort of an algorithm. Ln both sides. Find limit. Probably need to use L'Hopital, right? Make sure it's L'Hopital ready. And then E both sides. So we ln and we anti-ln at the end to fix it. And this is a great strategy whenever you have x to the x or 1 over x raised to the x, that sort of thing. So now it's your turn. Try this one. Everyone got the black algorithm there? Ellen, both sides, find the limit, E both sides. Here, try to use that example to help yourself solve this one. LIM, x goes to 0 plus x to the x. This is called a zero to the zero problem. Before you start, um, let me ask you a quick question. What is zero to the anything? What is zero to any power? Zero. What's anything to the zero power? See why this is a conundrum? This is indeterminate. Zero to the anything is always zero, but anything to the zero is always one. So which is it? Is this going to be zero or is it going to be one? That's a good question. Neither of these is actually zero. They're just both very close to zero. So what's point one to the point one? Or point oh one to point oh one? See? Is it getting closer to zero? Is it getting closer to one? Tough call. That's a really tough call without a calculator. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule in this new strategy to unravel this and see if it's closer to zero or one. It's one of these two. 
Who did it? That was fast. On the calculator. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can, play around, you can certainly play around with your calculator and plug in a thousand, or I'm sorry, plug in one one thousandth or whatever. But try the new tricks. And when you're done with that one, try this one too. LIM x goes to infinity, x to the 1 over x, which is like an infinity to the infinity style problem. I take it back, the second one is uh, zero, infinity to the zero style problem. I said infinity to the infinity. Okay, let's go over the first one here. I just started the recording. So you start off by maybe writing y equals x to the x, and then lnning, if you can use that as a verb. Ln both sides, which allows you to bring this x to the front. And then you limb both sides. Uh, I had a student earlier today who used limit x goes to infinity for everything. This problem in context is a limit as x approaches 0, so don't take my notes too literally. Uh, just follow the limit in the problem. Okay, now don't use L'Hopital's rule yet because it's not ready for L'Hopital's rule. It has to look like a fraction, something over something. Right now it looks like something times something. So you may not use L'Hopital quite yet, uh, but you could write that x in the front as 1 over x on the bottom. So like this. Ln x over 1 over x. And now you're ready for L'Hopital's rule. So I'll put L'Hopital's rule. So you can follow your work later. So the derivative of the top is 1 over x. The derivative of the bottom is negative 1 over x squared. And all of this basically just reduces to negative x. Okay? So this just gives you limit as x goes to 0, negative x. Well, what happens to negative x when x gets closer to 0? It's closer to 0, right? So this is getting closer to 0. But that's not the final answer because we did an ln in this problem and it wasn't there in the first place. So our last step is to sort of fix that and we'll e both sides or e, you know, e the answer, and uh, you're going to get just 1. So the answer to this problem is e to the answer, 1. Don't forget that last step. You ln, you have to undo it. Yes, question? If you do it from like the negative side to the x to 0 positive, would it be 0? Um, okay, we got a good question here. It's an excellent question. Um, I purposely made x approach 0 from the right. Does anyone know why I did that? Okay, well, first of all, if you put in, yeah, like negative 10 to the negative 10, this does have meaning, doesn't it? It means 1 over, you know, negative 10 to the 10th. Okay, so that has meaning, but what if you plugged in a negative value like negative 1 half? Then it would look like this. Which means you're going to involve the imaginary stuff. Square root of negative 1 half is going on here, isn't it? So I purposely stayed away from the imaginary by making x positive. I don't want any negative radicals. So that's why I did that. So it doesn't go to zero. It just doesn't work. Well, it doesn't exist everywhere. Um, for example, the square root of negative, uh, negative one half to the negative one half doesn't even make sense. But negative one third to the negative one third does make sense. So you end up with a s totally goofy domain there. So I'll let your complex analysis class do that in college. They'll let you talk about that kind of stuff if you take that class. Okay, let's try this one real quick, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, the homework's on the board. So there's two page 450 assignments, 
And there was also a, a page for something else assignment for chapter eight. I'm collecting as a packet, remember? So just don't get too far behind. This week you need to get caught up on your chapter eight homeworks if you didn't already. Okay, this one's also going to come out to one. If you let y equal x to the one over x and you ln both sides, the one over x falls down. Then you limb both sides. This time we're going to infinity. The 1 over x times ln x, you can just write that as ln x over x, right? Which is already L'Hopital ready. That's nice. Uh, just take the derivative top and bottom. Derivative of the top is 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom is just simply 1. This clearly goes to 0. And I'm giving you permission to e both sides, even though there's a limb in the way. Even though that limit is smacked right in front of the ln, doesn't matter. e both sides anyway. I won't prove to you why that is true, but it is allowed. The limit of a function is the same as a function of the limit. Don't do that with the DDX, though. You can do that with an LAM. Okay, there you have it. One, and you guys can graph them and just confirm it, or plug in numbers and confirm it. Any questions on that idea? Okay, so don't think of L'Hopital's rule as like a trick. Think of it as a tool, right? On the AP test, they're going to give you five limits problems, and two of them might need L'Hopital's rule. They're not going to tell you solve using L'Hopital's rule. Okay? Just use it when it's appropriate, like a tool. Something will get.